In this uh, video, we're going to see section 21.7 and capacitance and capacitors, new, a new concept. Um, a capacitor is um, any device that can be used to store charges. And uh, in principle, any two conductors can be used. And I, I have this um, case in which we have uh, two pieces of metal connected to a battery. As soon as the battery begins to operate, we'll draw charges from one of the conductors and we'll transfer them to the other one. And I have um, this representation, how the charge increases and begins to be Q and minus Q on the two conductors. This um, helps uh, the, define the um, concept of capacitance, which is the ability to store charges. And it is defined mathematically by capacitance equals the charge stored divided by the voltage used to charge it. So the more charge it is stored for a given change in potential, the better the capacitor is going to be. This is um, the same principle. We have um, that uh, a battery is like a pump. It will be pumping charges. We will be drawing positive charges from one plate, transferring, trans transferring them to the battery. The battery will accumulate the positive charges on this end, which is connected to this other plate. And so the charges will try to move away from each other and will get distributed on the lower plate. So the charge flows from this plate through the battery to this plate. As we know, when, whenever there is a charge on, on a plate, on a pair of plates, there's gonna be an electric field set up between the two plates. That, that field is uniform, and it is given by the charge divided by the area divided by epsilon zero. And there's going to be a difference in potential between the two plates and that difference in potential is given by the field times the distance between the, the plates. Since the field is proportional to the charge, then the, del the change in potential is going to be proportional to the amount of charge. So the more charge the, the plates have, the larger the potential difference between the two plates. So this process will continue until both the plates get charged to a point where when this voltage equals this voltage. If we, if we look at the sign of the charges, we see that this one is uh, in opposite order than this one. In other words, the negative is connected to the negative of this one. So it is like having one battery trying to force charges this way, whereas this other battery is trying to keep them fixed in place. So whenever the two are equal, the flow will stop. And this is the situation represented here. The movement of the charges stops when the change in potential in the capacitor is equal to the voltage of the battery. At that point, it is said that the capacitor is fully charged. If at that point we remove the battery, then we can end up with the, the two plates that are charged and this can be used for different purposes, like in electronics. As an example, let us uh, read this. Uh, we have a capacitor measuring in terms of these units that will be defined in a minute. The farads are defined as Coulombs divided by volts, and the capacitor is 1.3 microfarads, and it's connected to a 1.5 battery. What is the charge uh, on the capacitor? What is going to be the? What is the? Um, yeah, the charge on the, the. We are given the capacitance C, and we're given the voltage V, and they are asking us for the capac, the charge Q. Solving for Q, we get. 
this is the capacitance, this is the voltage, and we end up with big, these many two micro coulombs. Let me reemphasize that uh, the units for capacitance are farads, in in order uh, in honor of uh, Michael Faraday, and a farad equals one coulomb divided by one volt. This is um, one of those clicker questions that uh, this time you're going to have to answer on your own. But um, we are given the following situation. These two objects are charged to plus and minus four coulombs. Using, um, uh, and, and the, the difference in electric potential is, being, is measured uh, by two volts, which means that a uh, two volt battery was used to charge them. So the question is, what is the capacitance of these, these electrodes? Well, at this point, I ask you to please pause the video think, answer, and then come back for the, to check your response. I'm going to give you the answer now. If we just calculate uh, the charge divided by the voltage, the, the charge being 4 times 10 to negative 9 coulombs, divided by the voltage being 2 volts, then we get 2 nanofarads. This is another example, which is uh, similar to the one that we just did. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, in this case, we have a capacitor that has a uh, charge Q and minus Q, of course. And then the plates are separated. And um, the question is, what happens after the separation of the plates? Do you think that the charge will increase and the electric field will decrease? Or that the charge will decrease and the electric field increases? And so on. So I ask you to please pause, read all the answers, think about them, and answer them. Well, I'm going to give you the answer now. Well, Turns out that uh, the field is given by the charge divided by epsilon zero in the area, but uh, the distance has nothing to do with the field. So the field will stay constant. And because of that, the field is given by the charge. So if the field is constant, the charge is going to be constant. We have... Um, the definition of capacitance, which is the charge divided by the voltage, well, this can be placed in a different uh, context. The voltage in, is calculated by the field times the distance d, v equals cd. So the field is uniform between the plates. This can be replaced by that. So this gives you another way of calculating the capacitance. Now, since the electric field is given by the charge per unit area, the charge divided by the area and divided by epsilon zero. The, then the, this can, using that here, we get two, and also replacing the, the charge by sigma times the area. So this would be the charge. The field would be given by this and we end up with this simplified expression for the capacitance. So the capacitance depends on the area and it is inversely pr proportional to the distance times uh, the permittivity constant. So the interesting part is that the capacitance does not depend on the voltage used to charge it. It depends only on geometry. And we have um, here the two results. In, instead of epsilon zero, one can use one over four pi k. And again, I emphasize that the capacitance depends on geometry, the area and the distance. And this is this tells you how those capacitors are manufactured. You have two plates, and with something in between to keep them apart, not in contact, and then they can be rolled and that are 
many of those capacitors inside your cell phone, inside your uh, computer, your calculator, you just to put everywhere. In this case, we have a, a parallel plate capacitor with a distance between uh, with a distance between the plates of 0 0.07 millimeters, and the capacitance is one microfarad. And the question is, what is the surface area of the plates? Well, we're giving the capacitance, we're giving the distance. We know this constant. So they are asking us for the area. We solve for the area and we get 7.9 uh, meters. Now, I, I remarked the fact that the distance D has to be put in meters as well as the, the area has to be in meters to the second power. And uh, a follow-up question is how much charge it's on these plates if the capacitor it gets attached to a 1.5 battery? So we go back now to the original definition of capacitance and now that we we have the capacitance we're given the voltage we can calculate the charge. Turns out to be 1.5 microcoulombs. Another clicker question. Then in this case, a uh, capacitor is connected to a battery. And while being connected, the plates are separated a little bit. So what do you think is going to happen? The charge increases and the field decreases, etc. So I ask you to please stop the video, think about this question, answer it, and then come back for check your to check your answer I'm going to give you the answer now well in this case the voltage is what is constant the if the separation increases the capacitance decreases remember that the capacitance is epsilon zero area divided by D so if D increases the capacitance decreases so this becomes a poor capacitor which stores less charge under the same voltage so as we go from this case to this case the charge will decrease at the same time if the charge decreases the electric field will decrease because the electric field equals the charge divided by the epsilon zero in the area Now what happens if we have um, the stuff between the plates, something like uh, gel, water, oil, any other substance? Well, um, those substances are known as dielectrics and it can be used uh, in capacitor. The bottom line is that they increase the capacitance and that's why they, they are used. So let us uh, first look at the capacitor with air in between or with uh, a, a empty space there. So we have um, the, the plates are being charged to Q and minus Q and this sets up a, an electric field between the plates given by, well it can be given by different expressions. In this case we're using the voltage divided by the distance. The voltage is the voltage used to charge the capacitor. Well, now imagine that instead of having empty space or air, we fill the, that volume with uh, a polarizable medium. Those um, uh, substances are known as dielectrics. Well, if you remember, the, a, a polarizable medium is one in which the molecules can rotate and get aligned with, the elect with an electric field. So as soon as they get charged, then the electric field set up by the external charges will make these molecules get aligned in the following way, with the negative charges pointing to the positive charges and the positive charges pointing to the negative charges. Well, this introduces an, a, a second field, a second electric field that um, is um, opposite to the first one. The original one is this one that I 
painted in blue, so we still have the blue field pointing down. But the tiny molecules here are now pointing up. And inside we're going to have the two fields in opposition. So the net field is going to be the external one minus the polarizable, the one produced by the polarizable medium. And this is less than the original one. It, it is reducing the original one. So by introducing a field, uh, a dielectric, we are reducing the electric field inside. If we, re if we reduce the electric field inside, the distance is the same. That means that the voltage gets reduced. Consequently, you can charge this empty space capacitor with a voltage up to Q and minus Q, but you can charge this dielectric capacitor to the same Q and minus Q with a smaller voltage saving energy. So this is a repetition of what we just saw. We have in here we have a voltage V equals CD but here we have a different uh, uh, field so it's going to be the V inside is going to be the voltage with the dielectric is going to be the field inside times D, but the field inside is less than the external, than the original field. So this V dielectric is going to be smaller than the original voltage, which means that we can charge the capacitor to the same amount of charge with a smaller battery, which makes it a better capacitor. The capacitance increases and so with the dielectric we have this situation with the uh, without the dielectric we have this situation since this one is smaller than this one then this one is larger than this one now we can characterize those dielectrics by taking the ratio of the capacitance with the dielectric to the capacitance with without the dielectric and we can call it kappa but it turns out that if we look at all these uh, expressions, we can we see that this ratio is also equal to this ratio, the voltage in an empty space and the voltage with the dielectric, or the field, the ratio of the fields. Anyway, this kappa is going to be um, unitless, and it has uh, different values depending on the substance. So the substance is going to be characterized by the dielectric. We call this the dielectric constant. Well, um, and it is extremely useful because if, you, if you're given some capacitance and then they tell you that they added a, a dielectric, all you have to do is multiply the capacitance by this to, to obtain the capacitance with the dielectric. So what is kappa for vacuum or air? Practically one, so there's no ef effect. But if we introduce a Teflon between the two plates, we're multiplying the capacitance by two. If we introduce paper, just simple paper, then we're multiplying the capacitance by 3, and so on. So we can see that all the way to water, we get 80, and this other substance uh, gets, gets, uh, increases the capacitance by 300. Now, a problem, for instance, with water is that water is a conductor. So you have to have a way of uh, avoiding contact between the plates and the water. There's got to be something else there. Let's look at this problem. A uh, parallel plate capacitor has uh, plates of area such and spacing such. The insulator has a dielectric constant of such. And never mind this part. What is the capacitance? Well, it's going to be uh, the area divided by the distance uh, times uh, epsilon zero. So it is the area divided by this and epsilon zero. Now, in this case, since uh, there is a dielectric, which is multiplied times the dielectric constant to get the capacitance with the dielectric. So kappa is 4.9. Here it is. Uh, the, Permittivity constant is 8.95 and 10 to the negative 12. The area was given to be one square meter. And the separation is, is a half a millimeter, so 0 0.5 times, times 10 to the negative 3. 
Calculating that number gives you these many farads, which is a small quantity. Another qu uh, problem is a uh, uh, power play capacitor is charged using a 100 volt battery. Then the battery is removed. In other words, uh, the capacitor was charged and re it remained charged. Now, after that, uh, the electric slab is placed between the is uh, placed between the plates, and the voltage drops to 30 volts. What is the electric constant of the dielectric? Well, remember that um, the dial the dielectric constant can be is the ratio of um, the voltage with air, the capacitor, the capacitor, yeah, the voltage of the capacitors with air divided by the voltage with the uh, of the capacitor with the dielectric. So in this case, it's going to be a hundred divided by thirty. That gives you the 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 capacitance, and it's going to be three point thirty three. And you can reason it uh, this way. I, I did it from uh, remembering the, the definition of the capacitance, which is the ratio of the capacitance of the ratio of the voltages of the ratio of the fields. In this case, I use the ratio of the voltages. But uh, you can also think about it in the following way. In this process, the con what remains constant is the charge. Because uh, the fact that you remove the battery doesn't mean that you're affecting the, the amount of charge stored. So the charge is going to be given in one case as C1, V1, C1 being the original capacitance and V1 being 100 volts. And with Q1 equals Q2, which in, in the other case is going to be the new capacitance times the new voltage, which is uh, 30 volts. So from the new capacitance is related to the old capacitance by kappa C1. So we have C1, V1 equals kappa C1, V2. So we can solve for kappa from there, and kappa is going to be getting rid of the C1, it's going to be the ratio of the V1 over V2, which is precisely what I did from the beginning, 100 divided by uh, 30. Another multiple choice question, click a question, if the potential difference across a capacitor is double, what happens to the capacitance? Doubles, halves, remains the same. Well, at this point I ask you to, well, I gave you the answer. I didn't give you time to think about it. Well, it remains the same because as I mentioned before, the capacitance does not depend on the battery that is being used to charge it. it depends on the geometry only. Huh. Well, the, the summary of all of this is um, that uh, between two plates, the relationship is given by this. The charge gives the capacitance related to the charge and the voltage this way. And the capacitance depends on the geometry. And the uh, units of capacitance are the farads. A farad is one coulomb divided by, by a volt. The electric field between the plates um, can be calculated in different ways. This would be one way if, if this is known. Remember the delta V equals ED, the field is going to be constant. At the same time, for a power play capacitor, we, we find that uh, the field is given by this, so we can solve for the charge as epsilon zero area divided by D times the voltage. If we insert a dielectric between the two plates, then the capacitance increases. This increases and the relationship of the old capacitance to the new capacitance is by means of uh, the constant kappa, which is always larger than one. The um, homework is gonna be these uh, questions. And these problems And this concludes section 7.